Thanks, Kate. Appreciate it. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Steve Mujis, the Senior Vice President of Programmatic Sales for, for DV. For those not familiar with DV, DV powers uh, media quality and performance for brands, agencies, publishers, and platform. And I'm happy to be joined by Sarah today. Uh, Sarah, do you want to take a second and introduce yourself, talk a little bit about uh, Group Connect, uh, your role there, and maybe some of the clients that you're working with? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm Sarah Cook, as Steve mentioned. So I am the VP Group Director at Group Connect for the Precision team. So um, Group Connect is a bespoke solution within the Publicis Group for Bank of America. Um, and as I mentioned, I oversee the Precision team and that team um, actually oversees the digital media buying and activation across both partner direct and programmatic campaigns. So it's a great blend and provides great service and um, opportunity for our clients to have more holistic and integrated digital media, media planning process, as well as provide a more granular insight and optimization flexibility. Awesome. So we, um, I'm fortunate enough to be have partnered with Group Connect for some time now and working with the Bank of America client uh, at DV. So it, happy that you're joining us today. Um, so I think let's jump right into it uh, and get into some of the some of the meat of the conversation. Um, and just to kind of ease in, why don't you just take us through when privacy regulations started to take center stage for you and the client, and sort of how you navigated that. Yeah, absolutely. So that's a great question. Um, I would say that data privacy and regulation has always been at the forefront of what um, we take um, into consideration at Publicis Group. Um, however, I would say that we um, did see an increased area of focus on um, that topic leading into GDPR. Um, you know, as you can imagine, being a global brand, or global company, we need to make sure that we're taking that into account. Um, that has actually remained an area of focus for us, um, you know, coming off the heels of GDPR with CCPA. And then, um, you know, in the past year, year and a half of uh, preparing for the deprecation of the cookies. So um, it's really remained at the forefront of the planning and what we're looking for at um, all of our clients across the group. So let's just stay right there for a second and, and stick with GDPR and some of the regulations. Um, why don't you talk a little bit about the challenges that you're facing as it relates to that? Yeah, I would say that um, the biggest thing that we're trying to tackle right now is the uncertainty of a universal identifier that's going to be used going forward. I feel like a lot of uh, partners have you know started to roll out their own disparate solution, um, which is great. And it's what we need to be doing in the industry, but not all of those have been fully vetted or even rolled out yet. So that makes it more challenging and difficult um, for clients and agencies to put together, you know, testing or um, plan for these situations. Um, however, um, with that said, clients and agencies should be testing um, the solutions that have been rolled out and are currently in market. Um, but it should not be a one and done test. Um, you need to be reiterating on these tests because things are continuing to evolve this year in preparation for when the, um, the cookie list feature. So we need to make sure that we have not only an initial baseline, but then as things evolve, how we're seeing that scale and performance um, correlate. Yeah, I think let's let's stay here for a second. Um, so obviously over the last couple of weeks, there's been an incredible amount of attention given to uh, Apple's ATT framework and the Google Privacy Sandbox. Um, you touched on it, but why don't you go a little bit deeper to some of the things that Publicis is doing to stay ahead of some of the movements? Yeah, I would say the largest thing, largest concerns that we're hearing from our clients right now um, is how we're going to be able to maintain and scale their um, own CRM or first party audience data. Um, in addition to that, it's um, you know identifying and testing um, the new and emerging cookie list solutions um, being prepared. And then uh, last but not least, I'd say it's uh, preparing and working through um, you know different measurement solutions or what that might look like in the future. Um, obviously, things that we're doing, um, we're meeting regularly with our key uh, DSP partners, um, as well as um, you know for Precision, we also handle programmatic direct, so our direct. Um, key partnerships as well. Um, we meet with them on a regular basis to discuss, you know, the advancements that they're continuing to make, how things are evolving, any new testing opportunities. 
Um, and then last but not least, um, within the agency, I, um, you know, I work on Group Connect or in the Group Connect field, but I also have access to precision teams across the group. So um, we, you know, regularly collaborate and meet um, each of us. Um, the precision teams are building out um, bespoke uh, digital roadmaps and learning agendas for the clients to make sure that we're prepared for um, the cookie future. Um, we're putting plans in place, starting to talk to them and um, in many cases, we're actually already testing into these areas to get an initial readout. Nice. And so uh, cookies die. What's your biggest fear? And then what do you see as the biggest opportunity? Yeah, no, absolutely. I would say uh, to my last point, uh, being able to maintain um, that scale across, um, you know, any CRM or first party data that someone is using, as well as um, measurement. I think that we've, you know, as an industry, um, we've made some great advancements with targeting, but we've almost become too reliant on them. Um, and then I would say the third area, um, and this is more specifically for advertisers that are in highly regulated verticals, um, it's moving from more of that deterministic targeting to profitabilistic. So when you move to more of that modeled behavior um, for the targeting, you're not necessarily knowing all the inputs that go into that, which can get tricky when you're, you know, talking about regulations that you need to make sure that you need to adhere to for your particular client. Um, in terms of biggest opportunity, I mean, we're here today talking about contextual. So I think that that is, um, you know, at an area that we're going to see huge growth in next year. Um, you know, it's come a long way. I'm going to date myself here. I started um, in the digital industry in the early 2000s. Um, so, you know, contextual has definitely come a long way. But um, I think that we're going to see a resurgence there. Um, in addition to that, I think that first party data is still client first party data is still going to remain, you know, key, but you're, there's obviously going to be less scale there. Um, and then exploring, um, you know, any type of zero party, zero party data, or even working with partners on um, second party data partnerships. That's awesome. We, I would just say, um, on the contextual front, it's interesting. I've been a DV since 2012. So coming up on nine years and the backbone of DV technology has always been contextual. Um, they think of us as a safety provider, um, but the reality is it's a lot of the same technology. It's really just about understanding the context of a page at a very granular level. Uh, and if you can do that, you can, you can pr protect brands and then you can also connect them with consumers. And so I would say this, like in the last six plus months, the adoption of the technology has just been, I mean, pretty, pretty explosive. Uh, and so, you know, I think from your standpoint, what are some of the things that you're looking at when you're putting together a contextual strategy? No, that's, uh, that's a great question. I think there's um, a few different steps that, you know, I encourage the, you know, uh, analysts and um, managers on my team to look at. So first thing that you need to do when you're putting together a sort, any sort of media plan is to vet the type of contextual platform that you want to use. So whether that's more of that um, old school thinking of working with a, you know, endemic Publisher Direct, a PMP that's looking at a particular vertical within their site, um, or even the contextual um, capabilities that have been rolled out within the particular DSPs. So a lot of the key DSPs have rolled out their own contextual targeting. So tapping into that, that usually provides a lot of scale um, and you know lower data fees. But third is um, looking into and partnering with third-party um, data you know, contextual data partners such as DV. So one thing that, you know, you mentioned is being able to marry um, any of your brand safety and suitability uh, guidelines to your actual data target or your contextual targeting, which is going to marry and, you know, create um, more efficiencies there. Um, the second thing that they, I encourage my team to look into is um, so you've, you know, vetted what type of partners um, that there are available. How is that data being collected? So um, is that particular partner using a crawler, which is looking at keywords or phrases? Um, some crawlers are now starting to build in audio and video capabilities. Um, the last two are quite nascent still, but it is um, starting to evolve within the marketplace. 
Um, the second area that, you know, you might see and uh, be, need to understand is um, panel based. Um, you know, this applies more to connected TV. So linear, the panel base has been there for a while, being able to, um, you know, look at more genre or channel based targeting on that um, front. And then the last I would say is looking at the, um, you know, capability that um, how it's being collected is through metadata. So that's looking at like the URL string um, and pulling out bits of information from there and the particular site. And then also looking at any transcript data for video or audio. Um, you know, once you have that data collected, it's, you know, looking at the pros and cons and then determining which partner or um, which partner and or methodology fit best, um, not for your client, but also for the individual campaign. So, you know, you might have um, different uh, contextual targeting strategies campaign by campaign for the same client. And one of the things that you've done a terrific job of, um, and because we've been in a few of those conversations, is it's encouraging clients to, and, and agencies and brands to look under the hood. Uh, you certainly have done that and, and looked at the actual underlying technology as it relates to these solutions. Um, so kudos to you. And I think it's definitely something that we, should, we encourage across the board. Uh, what type of success are you seeing uh, with Contextual? Yeah, I mean, historically, um, Contextual has always worked well for branding or consideration campaigns. I mean, if you think about it, it makes sense. Um, you know, a user is going to be more engaged and more aptly to, you know, um, to take action if they're seeing an ad um, and the messaging aligns with the creative or the content that they're actually consuming. So that's, you know, obviously that's been around for a while. Um, additionally, I think clients are beginning to um, explore um, more of that third party uh, provider. I touched on this briefly, but um, marrying that um, pre and post bid um, ad verification data. So, I mean, again, it's going to be able to um, have more impact um, and have more efficiency and you're going to have uh, lower block rates and they're going to you know, be aligned with content that they deem suitable, not necessarily just the standard um, old brand safety. Um, I do think that since uh, Contextual is a cookie solution and it's not a direct one-to-one -one match that we've grown accustomed to for years, that we need to yeah. revisit um, how we're going to be you know, measuring our campaigns in the future, um, whether that becomes looking at um, more attention-based metrics like time on site, things of that nature, um, intent, or whether the um, clients are going to be looking at MMM, MMA data going forward, um, or even relying more heavily on brand studies. So, I mean, I think it remains to be seen uh, how clients are going to react from a measurement standpoint, but I think um, historically, and it's proven itself out, and it's um, going to be an area where clients are going to be able to scale effectively and efficiently, um, you know, moving into the cookie list world. So we, we see um, investment dollars flowing into contextual and whenever you see investment dollars flowing into it, any technology, there's uh, an increased investment in, in providers uh, trying to up level their capabilities. Um, with sort of these contextual 2.0 companies out there, ha have you tested, sounds like you have, but tested some of them and what are some of the early results that you're seeing? Yeah, I mean, I, we have tested them um, and we've been looking at, you know, more of the um, attitudinal uh, type reach across clients. Um, and I would say that, um, you know, what we're seeing is that there's been more advancement um, in where we're able to um, move forward. So, in terms of targeting, we're able to be more granular and get more, um, you know, not just the off the self shelf segments that, you know, may have been around five, six years ago, but we're able to really customize the data. Of course, that will play a, you know, impact in the scale of the audience that we're trying to reach, but it's getting more niche and more granular and aligning to our clients' needs, um, which has been great. And it's, um, we've actually been able to see, um, you know, reduce um, block rates and things of that nature. So I expect to see that can continue. All right. So we're at the top of the hour. So last question here. Um, so 
how does everything play out? We have cookies die, regulation continues to increase. Uh, what's next? Um, you know, I foresee that client first party data is still going to remain a focus. Um, that's not going away. Uh, granted, scale is going to be much smaller, um, but, you know, there's going to be wider adoption, um, you know, in testing through, you know, the ID solutions that are available, UID, IDL, um, core ID, things of that nature. Um, I expect to see an increase uh, usage of zero party and second party data that we touched on. Again, scale for uh, those three options are going to be small. Um, so, you know, I'm glad to see that contextual is coming back strong. And I think that's going to be a key area of focus for advertisers uh, going forward. I see it the same way. Um, and I'm, I'm, you know, glad to be part of that movement. Um, like I said, DV's been doing contextual for some time and seeing the increased investment has been uh, has been awesome. And, you know, we've, we've enjoyed the results that our clients have seen as well. So. Just want to thank everyone. I want to thank you, Sarah, for, for, for being a partner to DV and then also for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me.